welcome into this place. Father, this morning we enter your house of worship. We thank you. Father, we know you are here. You, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are here. And we are here to worship you and to glorify your name. We humbly pray that today our worship will be in spirit and in truth. We humbly ask that you prepare our hearts to receive that which you have prepared for us. When all is said and done, may we be more like Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church say, Amen. 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 Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. Did you all receive your blessings this week from the Lord? I know I did. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul reminds us a very important message that God wants us to know. And God spoke to me this week in this message, and I feel you guys need to know this. And so I'm going to read. This is the word of the Lord. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are of Ephesus, and to the faithful in Jesus Christ, Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So what Paul is saying here is that by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is their gift from God, that we all have these blessings of knowing God. Okay, it's a blessing. Sometimes we forget that in the busyness of our week and in the troubles that we face. Amen. And what I learned is that trouble for me this week was the blessing. Yeah. No, we have been chosen for salvation. 
we've been adopted as his children. We have the power to do God's will. And we have the hope of living with Christ forever. What a blessing. So do we have any visitors here today? We want to welcome you, uh, welcome you. on behalf of Gordon Frazier and the um, Goshen Family Church. We want to welcome you. And we also want you to know that you are blessed. And because you're here, we as a church are blessed. So we say thank you. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, we want you to know you're blessed. In case you didn't know, here at Goshen, we're a praying church. We're in our 40 days of prayer, which is moving us in directions we never imagined. Is that right, church? Yes. Okay. We're motivated by love here. We're founded by the truth of God's word. We're a Bible-reading church, and we're growing in, in our faith. So we hope that you come away feeling blessed and that the fellowship and love that you experience here today will, you'll carry with you throughout your life. So Goshen Church, let's get up and welcome our visitors today and welcome each other.
Good morning. Uh, good morning and happy Sabbath to you all. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. I, again, I want to welcome each and every one of you here today. Just, just want to highlight a few things so that our young folks remember and everyone will remember that we have um, Bible Jeopardy that is coming up. And I'm hoping that our young people are studying. Amen? Ages 12 to 29, so they have the teams. And on game, the first game will be on the, the 23rd of this month. So they will be competing. They have a set of scriptures that they're memorizing. You see, it's good when you have an army of young people rightly trained. And so we're, we're just gearing them up for two, two sets. The first game is on the 23rd of January, and then the next one is on the 28th of February. And we want to invite everybody to be a part, to come back in the afternoon to support them. Amen? We want to support them as they... Uh, they, they enjoy uh, just sharing God's word. I'm going to put it that way. Not a competition, but it's going to be us just in them enjoying the word of God together. I, I want you to know that I'm so pleased, I'm so happy that on the, this is actually our day four and our ten days of prayer. Amen. Amen. And nightly at seven o'clock, seven p.m., we have been having a wonderful time uh, in the bulletin for those of you who have not had the opportunity of calling into the, the prayer line um, it's it's somewhere in the bulletin here I hope it's there okay right the very first very stop very top announcement and, and invite your friends can I can I um, just say something without you being too upset at me even if you're upset I really you know uh, I leave the rest of the words out. I'm going to say it. Every night, and it's wonderful, I hear different voices but our voice. And maybe you're there. I know how many people are on the prayer line nightly. And, um, you know, it's when people and God's people get together to prayer. We have independence on the prayer line. Independence Church. They're praying with us in our 10 days of prayer. That's wonderful. Beverly's on the prayer line. I think last night I even got to, to meet uh, Sister Sylvia's sister. That was on the prayer line last night. And it's a wonderful thing, but I think uh, we need to be praying church. Amen? I didn't make it where we come together here every, every night. I said, let's try something easy. All you got to do is sit down at home or in your car and dial in at 7 o'clock. And we need to have more than 20 people on the prayer line nightly. Amen? Amen? So I pray that you will join us. I want to again welcome our friends, uh, visitor fr visitors in our midst today. We have a connect card. We would just like to keep in touch with you so you know what's going on. So please take a moment, fill out the connect card with all the pertinent information so that we can, we can connect with you. Goshen is a busy church. And we are doing a lot of things, and if you can partner with us in some of the things, we would love for you to partner with us. So if you're here for the first time, just fill out one of our Connect cards. The ushers will make sure that you get one if you don't have one. There's some visitors here. Just make sure that they get a Connect card so that they can connect with us. There's also a little book I want to make sure that you receive. In this book, Praying for Rain, it's a book that has a powerful formula of prayer so just make sure we have these books also. Every member should have one uh, of these books as, they, as we go through our time of prayer. As we worship together, my prayer is that we worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Be relaxed. Enjoy yourself. Uh, have a good time praising God today. Amen? Uh, you can't be afraid to praise God. And At Goshen, we praise the Lord. If you want to take your shoes off, it's all right. If you want to clap your hands, it's, it's all right. 
If you want to shout for joy, it's all right, because that's what we're here for. We're here to give God all the praise that he deserves. So let's worship him today. Let's praise his holy name. Our call to worship says today, where two or three meet in my name, Amen. I Amen. shall be there with them. The hour will come, in fact, it is already here, All right. when All right. true worshipers will worship the Father Amen. in spirit and in truth. Amen. That Amen. is the kind of worshiper the Father wants. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit yes, and Lord. in truth. Yes. You have been called Amen. to worship. Amen. Well, good morning, church. We ask that you would stand and join in with us, um, praising the Lord this morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We serve Amen. a Amen. mighty God, a God that has kept us to the second week of the new year. Isn't God good? All the time, God is good. How many of you all know that the Lord is holy and his name is righteous? to hear you lift up the name of God. Holy. Holy. Lord God. Lord God. What is he? Almighty. Holy. 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 Lord God. Lord God. Almighty, oh heaven and the earth, heaven and earth are full of, full of 
praise you. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. We praise the God that is able to keep us from falling and is able to present us faultless before his throne. Hallelujah. How many will say, I will bless the Lord? I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. And while I'm blessing him, his praises will continue to be on my mouth. I will bless the Lord. You're free to move. You're free to praise. The God that we serve. but we want to shabak the Lord in this place. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. And all, and all that, is that is within me. Bless his holy name. Let's do that one more time. Will you bless the Lord? I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Has he done great things for you? He has done great things. He has done great things for me. He has done great things. He has done. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. We're going to do that part one more time with no music. He has done great things for me. us in his word that hallelujah is the highest praise. Help me say hallelujah. 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 Open up your mouth and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break it down. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 
We're going to stay there just for a moment to hear you say hallelujah. This is the part that we all can participate in. If you serve the same God that I serve, you should be able to open up your mouth and say hallelujah unto the Lamb of God. So we want to hear you participate and say hallelujah. One, two. Open up your mouth and say you sound real good for the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody say, hallelujah. 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 Lord, you worthy. Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Whoop. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy of the glory, of the glory and, the and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy of the glory. Of the glory. I'm so glad that we serve a God that is worthy of the honor and of the praise. Well, we come here to praise God because praise is what we do here at Goshen. Praise is what we know. Praise is who we are. And this is the same praise that is due the God that we serve. Praise is what we do. Songwriter says, even when we're going through, I believe there's five people in here that can testify to they know the power of praise when you're going through something. Praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Even want to be close to you. I lift. I lift my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him. I'll bless Praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Even when I'm going through, I learn to worship you. Even though my circumstance
through your circumstance. We'll tell you what we do. Praise is what I What you do, let's yes, praise right let's there. Praise Even when you're going through your Thank circumstance, you let's put a praise right there. The enemy doesn't stand a chance Hallelujah. when you put a praise right there. Yes. Put a praise right there. I dare you to open up your mouth and shabak the Lord in this praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. After we begin to praise because we know what praise looks like and it is something that we do even when we're going through I guarantee you if you put the name Jesus on the end of your problems if all you have left inside of you is to say Jesus watch your circumstance and your situation change just begin to cry out Jesus there's power in the name. Jesus, the enemy has to flee. Jesus, your problem has to change. Jesus, when you've done all you can, just cry out Jesus. 
and watch him show up. Hallelujah. Say the name. Say the name. Yes. Say the name. There's power in the name. Say the name of Jesus. 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 Say the name so precious. There is no other name. That I know. Say the name of Jesus. Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Jesus. Say the name. He's so precious. There is no other name I know. Say the name, say the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Say. begin to think about all of what God has been to you. You made it another week. Statistics in Chicago says that 99 people lost their lives, and this is just the ninth of January, but you're in the place to begin to open up your mouth to say, thank you, Jesus. And if you don't know what to say, say his name. Say Lord, we thank you so much for the Sabbath day. We thank you so much for bringing us here today. And we thank you so much for being here with us as we worship and praise you today. Bring down blessings, we pray, and open our hearts as we receive those blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.
may be seated. It's prayer time, church. But every time is prayer time, isn't it, church? <laughs> we serve a risen Savior. Don't be discouraged. For we know that joy comes in the morning. If you're looking for joy, come on up. Joy is in the place. Hallelujah. Don't be. would like to come to the altar, we ask that you come to the altar. Those who would like to kneel, we ask that you kneel. Gracious and most merciful Father, we come to you. Father God, with bended knees and bowed heads, Father God, we come to you knowing the only way we know and the best way, Father God, through prayer. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we ask that if there be anything in any of us, Father God, that is not pleasing in your sight, we ask your forgiveness. We ask, Father God, that you would forgive us for breaking your spiritual as well as your physical laws, Father God creating us a clean heart. Father, we ask that you renew a right spirit in us so that every word that comes out of our mouth is acceptable in thy sight and there would be nothing, nothing that would interfere with this prayer being heard by you. Lord Jesus, 
to say the least, this has been a rough week for me, Lord. But God, you are still on the throne. And I just want to say thank you. Father God, I was told by the Vice President of Nursing that I was required to be at Christ Hospital this morning. But Lord, I am here to praise you. Yes, God. Father God, I know that you will provide for yes, me. God. So I'm just saying thank you. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us all through this week. Thank you, Father God, for our health. Thank you, Father God, for a sound mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our prayer, our 10 days of prayer, Father God, where we can come together from churches all over, Father God, and lift you up in prayer. Thank you, Father God, for helping us to realize how important prayer is in our life and that it truly does change things. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for our 40 days of prayer also. We thank you, Father God, that we are a praying church. You said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So, Father God, we will continue to lift you up in prayer. No matter what circumstances, no matter what situations, Father God, we will continue to lift up the Most High God in prayer. And Father God, we know that everything happens just as it should be, Father God, that nothing happens that, shouldn't, that isn't supposed to. So we say thank you. Father God, we ask that you would be with Ber Berlinda this morning, Father God, as she's recovering at Manicare, Father God. Touch her right now, Father God, and continue to heal her body. Father God, we ask that you would be with Anita uh, Jung and uh, Aaron's mom in a special way. Continue to bless and keep her, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the healing that you have given. Sister Austin, we ask that you would continue to heal her body, Father God, and we praise you for that. We ask, Father God, that you would continue to be with all of our seniors, Father God, in a special way. All of those, we ask that you be with Dorothy Jackson and Ethel Hall, Father God. Bless them, Father God, and just be with them. Father God, we ask that you would be with each and every person on our 40 days of prayer list, Father God. We all have designated five individuals that we are praying for daily, Father God, and we ask that you would hear and answer those prayers. We thank you for the prayers that you have answered, Father God, because you have been answering prayers during this 40 days of prayer, and we say hallelujah. Father God, continue to be with all of our youth, Father God, as they prepare for a Bible jeopardy, a way to bring them closer to you, Father God. We ask that you would be with each and every one of them. Father God, and be with our pastor this morning, Father God. I ask that you would continue to strengthen him and bring him back to his full stature of health, Father God, because I know you can do that. Because there is nothing you cannot do, Father God. So I'm going to thank you in advance for that. And be with him as he brings the word today, Father God. Bless him and touch him, Father God. And hide him completely behind your cross. So, Father God, we hear you and not him. Now, Lord Jesus, be with us the remainder of this Sabbath day. Continue to watch over us, continue to keep us, and continue to help to remind us, Father God, that we are a praying church and we will continue to pray because we know there is power in prayer. In Jesus' precious name, we do pray. Amen.
know we're scheduled to have our children's church. Um,
just just before the children's church or the children get ready to pick up the offering I would like to make a, a special appeal can I get some more volume on this please thank you I'd like to make a special appeal uh, in conjunction with the education department we, we have a student that is in need of some uh, funds to get back into school. Uh, they have, the family was able to amass most of what's needed, but they, they're in desperate need to get back into school. So what I would like to ask you to do today, especially if think about it, pray about it today, but they would need, they need to make up about $3,500. But we know God is able uh, to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or desire. So what I would like for, to ask you to do, if you so desire, you would like to contribute to helping that student get back into school, <laughs> into college, take a tight envelope and just write on that tight envelope, Wordy Student Fund. Wordy Student Fund. And uh, place your checks, your offerings into that tight envelope that you would like. Wordy Student Fund is what I would like for you to write on that tight envelope. And when you have uh, so done that, we will ask that you will see the treasurer, Kathy Couch, over there. And if you would give the tight envelope to her, please. Just write on it, Wordy Student Fund. And um, it, is, it is for a student um, of this congregation. So we ask that you will kindly, kindly make it possible for that student to get back into school. Amen. And um, if you can't do it today, you can do it tomorrow. Please do the best that you can to make it possible for them to get back into school. Uh, another thing I did not announce early on is that we have our town hall meeting. In the bulletin it says tonight, but... We're moving that back to the 23rd. We're moving that back to the last Sabbath. Or the last Sabbath, the second to last Sabbath of the month. So just bear that announcement in mind that on the 23rd we will uh, have our church town hall. And I need everyone to be here. Everyone to be. It's going to be a very, very, very important meeting. You may want to ask questions. You want to get the direction that we're going. And we would like to go there together. We don't want to leave anybody behind, so please bear that in mind. Write that, put it in your cell phones, put it on your calendars, that uh, on the 23rd, that Sabbath afternoon at 5.30, we will be having uh, our town hall meeting. May God bless you.
the spirit is moving. So he told me to speak. Now, I hope that's okay. Um, we need to trust him. We're going to trust that that student needs to go to school. And we're going to trust he gets there. She gets there. Whoever it is, Father God. Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Praise the Lord.
if you would only trust me. Just trust me. God promised to deliver. If we only just trust him. But so often we don't trust him. We say we trust him, but we really don't trust him. We rely on our own ways instead of God's ways. We, we have certainly worshiped God today. I am so glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. So glad to see so many of our visiting friends here with us. Uh, but you're no longer friends. You're part of the family. Because the minute you stepped in the door, you have uh, turned in your friend card, and you're now family. So we're glad that you are here, part of God's family and part of Goshen's family. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on, somebody, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercies endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of hosts, for his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. So magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name uh, together. I got my results from the doctor. The doctor said that my body can't repair itself the way it should because my sleep is interrupted every minute throughout the night. And so I'm not getting the sleep that I deserve. So I feel weak all the time. But I know a different doctor. A doctor named Jesus. And he said, whatever you ask in my name, all you got to do is believe. And once you believe, it will be done for you. The problem is we don't believe. Uh, the problem is we, we believe in everything else but Dr. Jesus. Uh, but I just stopped by this morning to let you know that he is a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He is a friend when you need a friend. He, he is a bridge through your troubles water. Not over your troubles, but through your troubles. That's the type of God we serve. And I'm so glad that I know that Jesus. That's why I can say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's why I can say, oh, give thanks Unto the Lord, for he is good. Hey, he is good. No matter how difficult things may seem, he is good. No matter if you're going through a storm, he is good. No matter if you have no money, he is still good. 
No matter if your friends leave you, he is still good. No matter if your wife deceives you and leaves you, he is still good. No matter if your husband lets you go, he is still good. God is good. You've got to give him the praise he deserves. I want to talk about confidence in prayer. As we're going through our 40 days and our 10 days of prayer, I want us to look at this topic today, confidence in prayer. All things are possible to the one who believes. Would you take your Bibles and go, to, go with me to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11 chapter. After you find it, I'm inviting you to stand as we read God's word together. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I would like for us to read from verses 4 through 7. Even if you don't have a Bible in your hand, as God's word is read, I'm inviting you to stand. We stand for different things. We stand for the Star Spangled Banner. Amen? We can stand for the King of Kings as his word is being read. Hebrews chapter 11. We want to read from verses 4 through 7. And by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And though through it he bring, being dead still speak by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and because there because here and became here of the righteousness which is accounted which is according to faith father in heaven oh god i need you i need you i need you Would you stop by here? Stop by me. Hide me behind your cross. Father, you said if you be lifted up, you will draw all men, all boys, all girls to you. So we just want to continue lifting you up today in your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Our text for meditation and my preaching text this morning is Hebrews eleven six. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently 
seek him. I want to read that again. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith is all that we need. Without it, we cannot please God. And when you look at this text and you dig into the text, you will find out today some of you may believe that you have faith, but by the time the end of this message, you will find out that you really don't have faith. And the two words that's used in the text, the word faith means, in the original Greek language, it means faithfulness. It means reliable. It means commitment. Mm. When we use the word faith, it's interchangeable with these words, faithfulness. Someone that is reliable, uh, someone that is committed. Yeah, faith is also interchangeable with the word belief. It's from the same Greek word, pistis. It simply means reliable, commitment, faithfulness, and confidence. The Hebrew writer says, without commitment, you can't please God. If we were to rewrite the text, the text will sound something like this, but without commitment, without being reliable, without being faithful, it is impossible to please God. Because he who comes to God must be faithful, must be committed, must be unmovable. Do you get it? So when we talk about faith, we're talking about showing a strong sense of duty, uh, showing a strong sense of faithfulness, Showing a strong sense of commitment. My brothers and sisters, it is impossible to please God if we're not faithful. It's impossible to please God if we're not committed to him. It is impossible to please God if we're not reliable. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Ah, you see, some of us, want to please God, but we want to please him on our own terms. We want to please him our way without pleasing him the way he says to please him. You see, prayer and faith works together. You can't have faith without prayer. And the reason why we are not committed, the reason why we are not faithful, the reason why we're not reliable as Christians is because we're not praying. And the reason why the devil seems to walk up and down our streets into our homes is because we're not praying. The reason why the devil seems to be beating us over our heads is because we're not faithful. It's because we are not reliable. It's because we are not committed. Uh, we are not, we don't have the fidelity towards God. And if we don't have these things, the Bible says it is impossible to please God because in order to please God, you first must be committed. 
Ah, you must be committed. And when you are committed to him, because God is committed to us, God is reliable to us, God is faithful to us. And so when you are faithful, when you are reliable, when you are committed, God says that he will reward you. Not only that, but God will reward those who diligently seek him. The devil wants you to believe that God is not on your side. But I stop by to tell, let you know that the word of God is real and Satan has an attack on our confidence Satan is trying to do everything that he possibly can do to shake your faith, to shake your commitment, to shake your reliability. That's the reason why some people end up in marriage and all of a sudden they're no longer married because the devil has stepped in and shaked their faith, shake their confidence, shake their commitment. But I stopped by to tell you today that the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, whatever you ask believing, you will receive if you ask it in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I said unto you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you have it. Have the commitment that you have it. Have the reliability that you've got to believe that you have what you pray for and then you will receive it. If you don't believe it, you won't receive it. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, Verses 23 to 24, Jesus said unto them, If you can believe all things, how many things? All things are possible. But you got to believe. The same word, my brothers and sisters, that same word, commitment. Is the word for belief is believe the same word faith and faithfulness is the word for believe and so if you are faithful to God if you are committed to God yeah, if you believe all things are possible to him who believes immediately the father the father of a child cried out and said with tears Lord I believe. Help thou my unbelief. You see, faith and prayer is inextricably intertwined. You can't have one without the other. If you're not praying, you will never get faith. You've got to pray to get faith. Because what is on attack, the devil is attacking your confidence. Means he's attacking your faith. He's attacking your reliability. That's the reason why some people, you see them in church today. And you don't see them until two weeks. We, we go in and out of church. We're not committed, but yet we want God to bless us. You, you, you're, you, you've taken the mission of to carry this gospel in all the world, but you're not committed, but you want God to bless you. You, you see, you, you, you can't say you believe and you're not committed because it's the same word, and I want you to get it today. That's why I'm saying it over and over again, because if you believe, it means you'll be committed because Jesus Christ believed in us. That's why he was committed to the cross. He was committed that he left heaven, come down to this earth to die for you and for me so that we can have eternal life. He took on a our sins. He took on our pain. He took on our stripes. That's why the word of God says by his stripes we're healed. Satan is attacking our faith. 
He has an attack on the faith of God's people. First Timothy uh, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 19 says, having faith and good conscience with some having rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. You see, if you have, Paul is saying, if you have having faith and good conscience, which some have rejected, some have rejected faith because they have rejected to believe. They have rejected to be commitment to the cause. They have been rejected. They have rejected being committed to the mission that God has called us to. And because they have rejected it, they have suffered shipwreck. Your life will be shipwrecked, my brothers and sisters. If you reject, continue to reject faith, your life will go nowhere if you continue to reject prayer and faith. They are, they go together like hand and gloves. You, the church needs to be praying. The, you need to be praying or your life is going to be a shipwreck. And I declare today that some of our lives are already a shipwreck because we have no faith. We are not committed. We don't believe. Our lives are shipwrecked. Our homes are shipwrecked. And the devil is constantly attacking your faith. I want to, can I be real with you for a moment? You see, not only you, but me. Sitting one morning, oh, one New Year's, I think, or Old Year's night, I'm feeling all miserable. All sorry for myself, sitting on the sofa. I've been praying for so many people. I'm sitting there and the devil just whew, into my thoughts. He said, look at all the folks you've been praying for. They're not even in church, but they're having a good time in the world. They're, they're making all this money, and they're having a good time. Look at you. You praying for them, but you don't even have money to go sit down somewhere on New Year's night. Not even take your wife to dinner. I'm, I'm being honest with you. But, but look at them. They're just having a good time. And then I start a question. Oh, God, yeah. I may just walk away from this and go do something else. Because this don't make no sense. I'm praying for them and they're having a good time. And I can't have a good time. They will say, yeah, yeah, you should just give it up and walk away. And I sat there and I ponder. But thank God, the Holy Spirit broke in. I pick up my phone and I went on Facebook and I type in, I need the Lord right now. You see, you've got to know when to call on him. You, you've got to know when to call out to God. And I, I couldn't say it out of my mouth, but I was able to get the, the fingers moving and, and, and I could able I was able to type I need prayers right now and the prayer the saints started praying for me I, I went to bed and, and I it wasn't the devil wasn't finished he said the battle is not finished the war is not over and so I lay, lay in bed I got up the next morning and I look at my wife and I recited the same thing to him to her I said, well, maybe I just give this thing up and do something else. But thank God for a wife like mine. Yeah. She looked at me and she said, don't you go there because I ain't going there with you. Hey. In other words, you're on your own, buddy. And I realized what was happening. You see, the devil was shaking my confidence. Uh, he wanted me to let go of God's hands. You see, I'm not a preacher that's going to tell you all the flurry things. I'm going to tell you about what's happening in my life. 
because you need to understand that none of us is bulletproof or Satan proof unless we are wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with Jesus. Shake it, attack it, the confidence. And I got up that morning and I went into the only place that I know to go. I got on my knees and I talked to Jesus. I talked to him and said, God, I need you. You see, everybody else can pray for you. But you have got to pray for yourself. You've got to know Jesus for yourself. And I declare that this means war. And I had a battle with the Lord. I said, devil, if you think you got me, you know I've got something else for you. This means war. You got to know how to fight him. You got to fight him on your knees. You've got to fight him in your war room. You've got to fight him with the word. Because the devil's job is going to attack your confidence. He's going to shake you to the core. And I declare that I know I'm not the only one that he's shaking to the core. I declare that I know that some of you are just barely hanging on. The devil is all up in your home. He's all up in your family. He's destroying homes. He's destroying husbands and wives. He's destroying children. He's messing with your finances. He's messing with your health. He's messing with everything. And the reason why he's doing it is because he is attacking your confidence. He wants to shake your faith so much that he shakes you out of the church. He shakes you out of your home. He shakes you away from your family. The devil means business. But my brothers and sisters, I stop by here to tell you that this is war. You got to fight. You can't allow him. You can't allow the accuser of the brethren to accuse you before God. You've got to fight. You, you've got to say, like Charles Jenkins, I've been in the storm and the rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever is going wrong, my war clothes are on. I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. No, no matter the attack, I wouldn't turn back. This means war. This means war. I plead the blood of Jesus over my children. I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. I plead the blood of Jesus over my increase. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. This means war. You can't just sit passively by and allow the devil to rip you in pieces when you can just put your war clothes on and go into your war room and start to fight. Fight on your knees. Fight. You gotta tell him. You gotta tell him. You, you can't have my breakthrough. Yeah, you can't have my family. Oh, you can't have my children. You can't have my wife. You can't have my finances. You can't have my church. You can't have my praise because I want to fight you, not 
much by myself, but the Holy Spirit is fighting with me. Jesus is fighting through me. This means war. attacking your confidence he's attacking your faith and he has a certain tricks that he uses you see he knows what he's doing he has light years ahead of us that's why the bible says in revelation revelation chapter 12 it puts it this way the accuser was cast out of heaven so he was cast out of heaven down to this earth to mess with you and me. Mess with us. But I, I just let you, want to let you know today that even though the accuser has come down and he has taken his, his make this, this world his home, you, you don't have to be worried about it. You don't have to be concerned about it because your Jesus and my Jesus has already taken it back from him. So you got to say, like I say to the devil, listen, man, I talk because I know Jesus is speaking through me. I said, listen, you had your time. You were sitting in heaven. You, you sat next to the throne room. You know what heaven is like. You have seen the Father. You have seen the Son, and you have seen the Holy Spirit. Don't you come try messing with me to make mess my chance up of getting, getting, sitting at, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Don't you try messing my chance up of being with my Savior. Don't you try messing my chance up for having eternal life. Don't you try messing me up. That's why I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you on my knees. See, when I was going, going through, my wife reminded me of something. She didn't know I knew it. She said, Pastor Chan was giving us an analogy. And he had this long rope. And he said, what we concentrate on is the small part of the rope. Uh -huh. You see, I was looking at what looked like glittering and glamour for people's lives, just the short part of the rope. Forgetting the longer part, which is eternal life. You've got to look at the long part of the rope because that's eternal life. Stop looking at the short part of the rope because what looks good is not good. It's just the short part of the rope. See, Satan, Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, Satan inferred that we cannot trust God. Uh, that God is not, that has, not, has no good intentions for us. You can't trust God's word, so he is attacking. And Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15, says Satan, his lies, he undermines uh, our confidence. That's his goal, my brothers and sisters. I want you to understand today that the devil is going to undermine your confidence. I'm telling you, it's time for us to stand up. It's time for us as God's people to understand that greater is he that is in me and in you than he that is in the world. It's time for you to understand that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's time for you to understand that the word of God says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord Lord will put up a fence. He will put a fence around you. It's time for us to understand. That if you just believe. All things are possible. If you have faith. Build your faith. 
Build your confidence. Be committed to that which you were called. Mm. Can I segue for a second? You are called to work in God's service. You're called to work in God's church. And you mean you say you sign up and you say, yes, yes, Lord. You need to be committed to that call. If you're not committed, don't expect God to do anything for you. It's just like when you say, I do at the altar, and you stand next to that blushing bride, and you're having a good time, and then all of a sudden, things don't go the way you think they should go, and you want to step out. You need to get into your war room, and you need to talk to Dr. Jesus, and you don't move until Dr. Jesus tells you move. He is the great greatest marriage counselor that you can ever ask for. You just stay in your war room when he tries to mess with your children. Stay in your war room. You need to start to say, I am not going to let you go until you bless me. God, I need a blessing from you. God, I need your help because he said that he is a very present help in the time of your trouble. But when God is trying to work stuff out, instead of you staying put and humble yourself, you say, oh, I'm going to walk out the church. I'm going to walk out my marriage. I'm going to go somewhere else. Where are you going? As David say, where can I go from your presence? If I go upon the hill, guess what? You are there. If I'm in the valley, you are there. No way can I hide from the presence of God. That's the reason why I will stay in my marriage. Stay in my church. Stay in my... Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm not going to move. Moving means the devil has shaken my confidence. It means that I lost and he won. I declare, I declare to you today that some of us that think we're going to heaven, we ain't going no place. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of the Father. If you're not doing God's will, don't look. To say, I'm going to walk on the streets of gold. I'm going to put on my long white robe. I'm going to sing and never get tired. Because I don't care how much you sing about it down here. If you're not walking the walk and talking the talk. If you're not committed to God. If you don't believe in God. Then you're not going to sing it up there. You're not even going to see the streets of gold. Well, you might see it by looking up at a transparent city. And wish, wish that you had made it right. I got to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I can't sugarcoat it no more. Jesus is about to come. We've got to get this together. Watch this. The upward look. Here's what Ellen White says. Satan sought to undermine the confidence of the angels in God's government. He desired a place. He, he desired a place occupied by Christ. Having, having in his mind that he, that if he gained this position... To make an effort to take the place of God. Adorantly, he presented his suggestions to the angels. Uh, that means deceitfully. He presented his, his, his suggestions to the angels. And many of them received these suggestions. He, he felt, he left 
his insinuations in, in, in their minds to develop. Watch it, my brothers and sisters. They, not as continuous as their leader, began to communicate their theories. Satan was the originator. You got it? I put it up there for you guys to see it. He is the originator of doubts that they express. But he presented them. Listen, listen, listen. He presented them as the opinions of the larger number of angels and as such something that should be considered. In other words... He put doubt into their minds. And not only that, he let them feel that all of the other angels believed the same thing. And obviously, if everybody believed the same things, then it must be correct. You see, we doubt the word of God. We doubt all kinds of stuff. It is the devil that places doubt in our minds. Testimonies, Volume 5. It is Satan's plan to weaken the faith of God's people in the testimony. Satan knows how to make his attacks. He works upon minds to excite jealousy and dissatisfaction to, to, towards those who, those who are ahead of the work. Okay, can I break that down for you? Here's what she's saying. The devil weakens God's people's faith and their testimonies to start to work in their minds. He puts the doubts in there. And then we start to get jealous against each other. Hmm? This one could do this better than I can. Push jealousy in the home. And it caused this satisfaction. I want you to understand where these things come from. This satisfaction is not from God. Jealousy is not from God. When you start to get dissatisfied, you need to understand and know the origin, the, the originator of that, and that is no one else but the devil. And he begins by causing us to mess with the head of the church. That's what she means. The head of the work. So we get dissatisfied with the pastors. The pastors are not doing this. The conference is not doing this. This person is not doing this. That's where he begins. Number two, the gift is the next thing he questions. We start questioning our spiritual gift. Do we have the ability to do what God has called us to do? Then we start to disagree with certain things in the word of God. Well, yes, I know what the word of God says, but. Huh? Honor your father and mother that your days may be. But you know what? I'm so annoyed with my parents. So I don't have to honor. Huh? You start to write your own Bibles with your butts. God says, I hate divorce, but a divorce anyway. You start writing your own chapter. Ain't none of us are apostles, and this is what God says. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Skepticism makes us skeptical. 
against the word. And she says, we start to hit the vital points of our faith, the pillars of our position, then doubt. Then we start doubt the holy scriptures. And then the downward march to perdition. When we start to doubt God's word, when we start to doubt the testimonies, when we start to have disbelief, because we ought to be a people that believe on the word of God. But the devil is busy trying to shake the faith of God's people. I want to let you know, the shaking of God's people has already begun. Revelation 3.16 tells us that God's people are going to be shaken in the last days. Hmm. It tells us that there's going to be a shake in Revelation 3.16. So then, because you are lukewarm and need a coal or no hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Can I break that down for you? Uh, because you lack confidence, because you lack faith, because you lack commitment, I can't even stand you. You don't taste good. You may look good, but you just don't taste good. So God said, Phew, I'm going to eject you out of my mouth. So when God ejects us out of his mouth, the devil then have free reign in your life. And your life becomes a shipwreck. You're lukewarm. You have no commitment to God's word. You have no commitment to God's church. You have no commitment. You, 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 you want the world. You, one time you're in the world and next time you want to be on God's side. That's not how it works, my brothers and sisters. If we're trying to attain heaven, there's only one way by which we can do it. It's, it's through the narrow road. Because broad is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life eternal. You can't create your own scriptures. Because if God had left us to create scriptures, this world would be a mess, just like we are a mess. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Let me go on, let me go on. I got, I got a few more things I want to I cover. 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. That's what the Bible says, 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. The Bible says that they will be a fallen away. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless a fallen away comes first and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. In other words, the falling away of God's people has already begun. The shaking has already begun. People have allowed the devil to shake their faith so much that he, that he has shaken them out of the church. Shaken them out of the relationship with God. I stop by to tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's time for us not to be shaken. It's time for us to recognize what the devil is up to and get into your war room and get on your knees and start praying because if possible, he will deceive the very elect. Don't think that you're a good Christian and you come to church every Sabbath and because you come to church every Sabbath, it's going to be okay with you. I've got news for you. Unless you do the will of the Father, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. You will be shaken right out of God's church. In a survey, George Barner surveys some Adventists, and the survey states in all of the Adventist churches and all of the other churches, this survey he did, he says, Adventists pray the least. Why? 
because we're concerned about the world and the world's goods. We're concerned about that short end of the rope instead of eternal life. We're wrapped up in everything but prayer. That's why the devil is running rampant in our lives and in our homes because we have no commitment to Jesus Christ. You got to be a praying church. You got to be a praying people. The text goes on to say, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you understand the deception? The devil is trying to show himself as if he is God. He see, he's sitting lofty and that he is, but my brothers and sisters, you see the deception is so, so insidious that if we are not careful, we fall trapped to his snares. You know, when you get into the army, you look a certain way, right? You got to cut your hair, right? Can you go in the army and say, I'm a, I'm a Marine and I've got locks down my back? Huh? No. You, you, you can't put certain things on. You got to look a certain way. How is it that when we are part of the army of God, we think we can dress anyway? Our skirts can come all the way that you can see the daylight and the moon and the stars. You wear what you want to wear. Whatever jewels you want to put on and think that we're going to make it to heaven. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I've got news for you. This is all the attack of the devil. I just want you to see this. He's shaking the church. His attack is on the word of God. His attack is on the spirit of prophecy. His attack began in the Garden of Eden, and it's no different now. He, he is the same person. He's up to the same tricks. But I want you to know that this means war. And you got to believe it. You've got to get in your war room, and you got to start a fight. Fight on your knees. Fight for God to reveal his, his self to you. So let God show you who he is. I want to share, share this. It seems as if the church is going to fall. But here is good news. In a vision, she says, in eight testimonies, in a vision I saw two armies in terrible conflict. One army was led by the banner bearing the word, the world's insignia. Listen to it. The other was led by the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel. Standard after standard was lifted, was, was left to trail in the dust as, the comp as company after companies from the Lord's army joined the foe. Uh, 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 let, me, let me just stop right there. What she's seen, what she's, and she says in vision. So God is showing her this. What she sees is great Bad, this great army, but the people in the church, in God's church, jump ship. They were shaken out of the church. They allowed the devil to shake their confidence. So instead of being in the church, they left the church. And so you have empty seats. So it seems. Because she goes on to say, company after company from the Lord's army joined the foe and tribe after tribe from the ranks of the enemy united with the commandment keeping people of God. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. 
He didn't say hallelujah or you're shaking in your boots because you're trying to wonder if you're going to be one of those that are jumping ship. But if you're here today, I declare that you're not jumping ship because you heard from the word of God that the devil is going to try and shake your confidence. So all you got to do is hold on, start to pray, get in your war room and agonize with God. So what she's saying is you guys that love the world, who you want to look like the world, you want to dress like the world, you want to party like the world, nightclubbing like the world, listening to all the music, JT and CJ and all these people that can't even pronounce their names. You, you, you want to be all up in there doing the nay, nay and the bump and grind and, and all that kind of stuff. You want to do what the world is doing. So when you start to do what the world is doing, eventually you're going to end up company, company ah, with the enemy. But I, I like the fact that God made it plain that we are living in a time, and I believe the time is now, that when the companies, companies are just a small number, but she said tribes are going to come into God's church. So soon or later, if you don't get here for 9 o'clock or maybe 8.30, you will have no place to sit. I'm going to be all the way back here having to stand up and preach because people are going to be all on the podium because tribes and tribes are going to leave the world and they're going to come to get this gospel. They're going to come and they're going to eat this gospel, the very gospel that you have rejected. You see, because they've got some sense, they know, they, they know what is to come. But you act like you don't know what is to come. What is to come is disaster. What is to come is destruction. Oh, my brothers and sisters, some of us think, ah, we think that we can be tight with Jesus while rejecting his bride. I love this little thing. I'm going to put it up there so you can write it down. You see, we want, we think we, I'm tight with Jesus. I know Jesus. I know we were tight, but his church, the bride, we want to reject. You can't be tight with Jesus and reject the principles of the bride, what he set down in his word. My brothers and sisters, don't let the devil shake you. Don't let the devil put doubt in your mind. He's going to put doubt in your mind. Don't let him. Here, here, here's what this testimony is, volume 5. By giving place to doubt and unbelief in regard to the work of God and by cherishing feelings of distrust and cruel jealousy, they are preparing themselves for what? Complete deception. They rise up with bitter feelings against the ones who dare to speak of their errors and reprove their sins. I know. Brothers and sisters, don't cherish feelings of doubt. You got to have confidence in the word of God, in the Bible. There's some texts. Second Peter, prophecies is going to be fulfilled. And the prophecies are, are, are already being fulfilled. Prophecies after prophecy. Just look around. Nations are angry. By this we don't know. Jesus is coming again. The church is asleep. Lukewarm. The Bible says it. It's the last church. It shows that we have confidence in the word of God and Jesus is coming again. You need to go home. 
Take him off the shelf. Dust him off. Read him. Read God's word. And when you read God's word, it should drive you to your knees in prayer. I don't care how much you sing praises to God. I don't care how much you jump and shout to God. It could all be empty praise. It's only when you have had an encounter with Jesus Christ. It's only when you have confidence in his word. It's only when you have confidence in him that your praise is not empty because you're not given praise from just because you're talented. You're given praise because you've had an experience. You've had an encounter. You know God for yourself. And because you know God for yourself, you can give authentic praise. The devil is shaking our confidence, but I stop by to tell you, you've got to have confidence in Jesus. Romans 6, for the wages of sin is death, but a gift of God is eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ, oh Lord. That gift is available to you today. That gift is available to me today. The church, my brothers and sisters, even though it seems shaken, uh, even though the devil is trying to rock his confidence, the church uh, will go on to the end. Uh, oh, Jesus says today, behold, uh, I stand Stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me. Oh, my brothers and sisters. And John 14, 14 said, if you ask anything in my name, Jesus says, I will do it. So what do you need from Jesus today? Do you need grace? He's got it. Do you need confidence in Christ in Him? He's got it. Do you need money? He's got it. Do you need, do you need, do you need help? He's got it. Do you need Him to put your marriage together? He's got it. Whatever you need, He's got it. Whatever you need, He can supply it because He said, Ask, 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 believe if you ask, and you believe if you ask, and you have confidence if you ask, and you are confident committed to the work of God, then God is going to be committed to you and God will give you whatever you ask for. You must have confidence in your church. Have confidence in your church. Peter says, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The dragon was wrought with a woman and went to make war with the remnants of our seed. But God's church will endure to the end. Who is God's church? It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's me. We are God's church. This is just the building. During the dark ages. Of spiritual darkness. The church has been seen as a hill. Enfeeble, she says. As it may appear, the church is the only is the only object upon which God bestows in a special sense and supreme regard. My brothers and sisters, don't be discourage. God's church will make it to the end. You will make it to the end. Some of us are getting discouraged. Some of us are ready to let go of God's hands. We get discouraged and what we say is because I don't like what's going on in the church. I got to get this in. I'm almost done. Because I don't like what's going on here, I'm going to leave the church. Because I don't like what's going on here, I, I'm going to withhold my tithe and offering. Nine testimonies. I got to get this one in. Page 249. 
Some have been dissatisfied, dissatisfied and upset. I will no longer pay tithe. Right here. It's happening right here. Hmm? I will no longer pay tithe and offering. Because you got to put the offering in there. Because the offering is what supports the church. Uh. So they say, I, I, I will no longer pay t- my tithe, for I have no confidence in the way things are managed at the heart of the work. But will you rob God because you think the management of the work is not right? Make your complaint plainly and openly, in the right spirit to the proper ones. Send in your petition for things to be adjusted and set in order. Do not withdraw from the work of God and prove unfaithful because others are not doing right. The devil's job is to shake your confidence to shake your faith. And because we all get into our feelings so many times, and I don't feel this, and I don't feel that, and I don't feel, get out of your feelings. It's not about your feelings. It's not about how you feel. It's what's right. It's about what God says. Feelings sometimes will trip us up. Just check us out. Feelings got us into bad marriages. Feelings got us into bad relationships. It's not about feelings. It's about principle. The principle of God's word. The principle of thus says the Lord. My brothers and sisters, you need to understand. On your knees, you need to be fighting this war. Because it is war. And the war will not end until Jesus comes. So you need to be fighting, fighting on your knees until Jesus comes. Young people, fight. You know how to pray. Pray. You don't have to get on your knees and and close your eyes and say, oh, sometimes you just need to say, Lord, have mercy on me. God, rebuke the enemy. Because he's trying to get me all tangled up. And so I come to him in the name of Jesus. The enemy, you've got to go. Oh, somebody today needs to take back what the devil has stole from them. Get into your war room. Maybe you need to get with that person who, who you don't like or who you feel don't like you. And you need to grab them by the hand. And you need to say, this means war. Let's go to war on our knees. Maybe that wife needs to grab that husband. That husband needs to grab that wife. That child needs to grab that parent. And let's get on our knees. And let's go to war. Because this means war. The devil is just trying to shake you. He's trying to break you. And if you let him, he will break you. That's why Jesus says, or the writer of Hebrews says, hold fast till I come. I'm coming again. I'm coming again. Hold fast till I come. For every house is built by someone. But he who builds all things is God. But Christ as a son, the Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. Hebrews writer says, hold fast until the end. Don't let go. Pray. Until something happens. Don't give up. Pray until something happens. Pray without ceasing. Seek ye the Lord. While he may be found. Call upon him. While he is there. Don't give up. Seek God. Because this 
means war. You got to understand. Give me a second. Give me a second. Understand, my brothers and sisters, the time that we're living in, Jesus is about to come. Maybe your confidence has already been shaken. Maybe you have been out of the ark of safety. But you want to say, we're going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to stand up for my right and I'm going to fight. Because Jesus is going to fight with me. If that's you today, I'm going to invite you to stand where you are. You, you want to be on this battlefield? You want to fight? You want to fight? Because the devil has shaken you. The devil has tried to, to let you let go, but you want to fight today. You want to stand firm in God's word, and you want to say, God, I'm going to seek you while you may be found. I'm going to call upon you while you are there. Uh, I'm going to let go of everything, and I'm going to hold on to your unchanging hands. My brothers and sisters, this is no time to play because the enemy that we fight with it, it doesn't fight fear. You can only fight if Jesus is fighting for you. You can only fight if Jesus is residing in you because it's no longer you. It's Christ who is living in you. One more appeal I want to make. You need to get to know Jesus. You don't know him. You don't know him. But you want to be a member of this remnant church. I'm going to open the doors of the church because I can't stop unless I give someone the opportunity to, 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 to respond to the call of God. And you want to say, Lord, it's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. I need you. If that's you, you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. And you want Bible studies. You want to be a member of this church. You want to be a member of God's remnant church. I'm going to invite you to step right out of your seat. I want to pray for you. Pray, church. Pray. Somebody needs to give their heart to Jesus today. I pray that somebody give their heart. You have not been baptized. But today, you want to say, Lord, Lord, it's me. God's not going to break through for you in your disobedience. There's one. There's one. I'm not going to be long. You hear the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. Harden not your heart. Behold, today is the day of salvation. You don't have tomorrow. You have right now, this second, this minute. If that's you, step out of your seat. And I've been walking this road for a long time. I have not yet given my heart to the Lord. I've not been baptized. But today I want God to do some miraculous things in my life. So I'm going to step out. Eyes closed, your heads bowed. I want to pray. God, we've done everything that we possibly could do. There's no amount of words you can put in my mind and in my mouth to speak, to move anyone, if you can't move them by the power of your Holy Spirit. So, Heavenly Father, today, I pray for your children that stand in because they want strength to fight. They want strength to pray. They want strength to defeat the enemy. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will reach into them, that you will give them the strength. Give them the strength to fight. God, I pray that you'll put them back together, put all the pieces back together, put their financial health back together, put their spiritual health together, put their homes back together. God, put marriages back together. Bring children back together with their families. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. 
that you will be the anchor that holds in the storms of life. Hold your children, Father. Hold them. And don't let them go. Father, before I close, I know there is somebody that needs to make that commitment because you want to bless them. You want to bless them with eternal life. You want to give them the desires of their heart. But they need to make that decision to, to be baptized. They need to make that decision. Say, so God, I'm going to give one more second so that they, can, they will answer that call. Father, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for your power. In Jesus' name I pray. Let the church say amen. Thank you, pastors, for those words. Now, we're going to war, right? We're going to war on our tithes and offerings and our giving. Get in your war room on tithe offerings and get in your giving because we know that God is too good. We know that he loves us so much that he went to the cross for us. He gave up his life for us. Because he thought that I was worth it. He thought that you were worth it. He gave up his life for us because he thought that we were worth it. And so now we're going to give him what's due his name, right? We're going to give an honest tithe and offering to him. Can we just bow our heads for prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come now to give ourselves to you. Accept these tithes and offerings and add your blessings to them that your kingdom might come into our hearts and our minds and to everyone that's around us. It's my prayer in thy son's name, amen. Oh! 
before the benediction, after the benediction, Elder Ferguson will come with, uh, with an announcement. So ushers, please do not usher anyone out until after Elder Ferguson comes forth. Let us please stand for our benediction. Our God and our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Yes. Oh God, we just love you and we just bless your holy and righteous name. And we thank thee, O oh God, for the word that was brought forth. And we pray that it would take root in our lives and do us good. And now may the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide in each of our hearts now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen.